Welcome, and thank you for coming to Port Street High School's Year 12 2020 graduation ceremony. Of course, the events of 2020 have meant that many schools across New South Wales, other Australian states, and indeed around the world had had to, have had to cancel similar face-to-face -face celebrations. And we are really privileged to be here together tonight. Tonight's ceremony is of course being live streamed for your grandparents, siblings, and others who uh, didn't uh, make it. Um, so please just be aware that the uh, photographers will be roaming around the audience. If they park themselves in front of you for uh, a moment or so or two, uh, just be mindful. They, they're aware of that and they will uh, move on without obstructing your view for too long. I'd like to call on Asha Howes from Year 10 for the acknowledgement of country. Acknowledge the Kadigal people who are the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we are gathered tonight. I also pay respect to the elders of the Eora Nation, both past and present, and it being NAIDOC week, I extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Year 12, as you leave the fort, remember this. You have been here for six long years, but Aboriginal people have been living here for 60,000 years. Thanks, Asha. Lia Zeng's visual arts major work film piece will be screened now. It's titled Curiosity Killed the Cat.
Thank you, Jamie. Year 12. Throughout your time here, there's been a constant stream of achievements and they've enriched me with the utmost pride. It would be simple enough, although very long, to rattle off the academic and sporting achievements that you've received. But I want to focus on the other things, the little things you've done to become the well-rounded and decent young humans you are today. The selfless support you gave to an anxious friend, looking after those who experienced sickness or tragedy, and the way you have passionately advocated for the worthy, worthy causes. In thinking about giving you some life advice, I'll be the first to acknowledge that my generations and my generation, the one generations above me, perhaps haven't made the best decisions and may not be entitled to give such advice. But please just indulge me by listening to my few words of guidance. The world is going to get better and it's going to be up to you. This realisation may seem kind of intimidating, but I hope it's also inspiring. Because with so much uncertainty, with everything up for grabs, this is your generation's world to shape. As you leave school and enter the world during a pandemic and economic recession, try and, try and remain positive. Don't be afraid. The world has gone through tough times before. Slavery, war, famine, disease, the Great Depression and terrorist attacks. And each time we came out stronger, usually because a new generation, people like you, learned from the past mistakes and figured how to make things better. Barack Obama recently spoke to, the, to a graduating cohort in New York City, and as he said, be sure to build a community. No one does things by themselves. Right now, when people are uncertain about the future, it's easy to be cynical and say, let me just look out for myself or my family or people who look like or think like me. But if humanity is going to get through these difficult times, if we're going to create a world where everybody has the opportunity to afford university and find a job, if we're going to save the environment and defeat future pandemics, then we're going to have to do it together. So be alive to another's struggles. Stand up for another's rights. Leave behind all the old ways of thinking that divide us. Sexism, racism, prejudice, status, greed, and set the world on a different path. All of you are now progeny of this great institution and have been given a free, secular education. Please remember your roots. You are champions of public education, so proudly fight for its funding and its recognition. As I said to you on your last day of school, despite my sometimes feeling overwhelmed by what can seem like endless doom and gloom, there are many times that I've been reassured by the, overwhelm by the overwhelming sense of optimism in knowing that you lot are at the helm steering this ship. I'm looking forward to reading about your achievements in the media, seeing you author an article, watching your performances on stage, or hearing about your plans to fix up the world that generations previously have uh, messed up. And I know that even if you don't do any of these big things, you will still be doing small but great things within your community. Figuring yourselves out here at the fort has not always been easy, but it has been an absolute pleasure for me to see you grow into the true forces of, natures, of nature that you are over the last six years. Thank you, Fortians 2020. I'm now going to go on to the presentations. And may I call uh, Year 12 students with surnames A through to I to go to your right-hand side of the stage. Oh, great. Good to see you there. Um, and uh, I would like to call on Juliet McMurray, our principal, uh, who can award the graduation certificates and 40 in badges. Daphne Al. Dubaraha Bahirathan.
Isha Baldeo. Ruby Brightson. Isaac Broadhead. Kayla Chan. Nicholas Chan. <laughs> Luca Chalia. Felicity Charles. William Chen. Anson Cheng. Justin Chung. Sabine Chinlo. Michael Chu. Stephanie Cho. William Fang, Julian Fu, Bridget Gard, Vedika Gold, Emily Grimes, Millie Hai, Benjamin Hamer, Wu He Han, Alana Hodzik, Austin Ho. Miller Holtz, Jessica Wang, Matthew Huang, and Luca Itamani.
Congratulations. I'd now like to introduce Jane Fitzgerald, the mother of Tom Stevens, to give the parent address. It doesn't happen without the glasses. I move this, okay? Yes. Uh, good evening, Ms McMurray, Ms Aka, my name is Takarin. Uh, teachers and staff, parents and families both here and at home, and of course, most of all, hello to all of you amazing young adults who are graduating here tonight. Um, it's a genuine honour to be asked to speak to you on behalf of the parents and families. I've met a lot of your parents and families over the years here at Fort Street, and it makes me feel pretty humble because um, they're a pretty impressive bunch. I feel that a speech at this point of this year kind of has to mention two things that are kind of obligatory. It's become the new rules of speech giving in a way. The first thing that has to be said is 2020, hey? Wow, who saw that coming? It's become a little bit of a cliche perhaps, but cliches are often cliches because they're true. It has been quite a year. I can clearly remember sitting in this hall on the first day of your year seven, somewhere around there, uh, way back in 2015. And I remember Ms Moxham saying to you, you are the 40s of 2020. And it had a futuristic kind of ring to it. And we would have each had our own vision in that moment of that startling idea, 2020, a bit science fiction, maybe jetpacks were involved. But I don't think that many of us in that moment imagined a pandemic that would disrupt the world and our lives and your year 12 in such significant ways. But here you are, and that leads me to the second almost obligatory thing to talk about, that you have made it through the year and the HSC, hurrah, and that that's because every one of you has shown enormous resilience to get here. We're sad that you have missed out on things this year that were precious to you, whether they were excursions or school sport events or Steadfords, all the kind of school events that have filled up your calendars during the years here at Fort Street and give the year its punctuation. If you're one of the many here who are part of the IMP, you missed out on the performances and concerts that have become such highlights of our years here at Fort Street. Your parents, grandparents and families have also felt the loss of these events. There will have been missed opportunities to celebrate 18th birthdays and other important celebrations and rituals that help us mark the passing of time. But somehow you have all learned to live with these disappointments. With the support of your remarkable school, your friends, your families, your communities, you have found ways to keep going. We all know that resilience is not about avoiding adversity because that's not possible. It's about finding ways to navigate through adversity and to keep moving ahead. Life clearly is not always predictable or perfect. It doesn't always work out the way we planned. Someone once suggested to me that it's like riding on a bike. Sometimes the path ahead seems straight and smooth, but many times the path will be bumpy or with sudden unexpected turns. Sometimes we might even fall off and the bike might need repairs. We might need to take some time to tend to a grazed knee. We can't avoid the bumps and the falls, but the important thing is to do the repairs, put a band-aid on the knee to get back on the bike and keep pedalling. What lies ahead for you will have its great joys and excitements, and will also have its challenges. But this year has shown you will be up to the task. Your years at Ford Street have equipped you to face up to difficulties, to problem solve, to ask for help when you need it, and to work together to find a way forward. 
We can fuel our stores of resilience by finding moments to be grateful for what we have. As you say goodbye to Fort Street and your school lives, I'm sure you will be taking many moments to be grateful for what you've shared here. I have seen how the culture of this wonderful school embraces critical thinking and creativity and curiosity, inclusivity and diversity, compassion and connection, and it allows young people to grow and thrive. There are so many extraordinary opportunities and programs here that many of you will have been a part of. There are so many brilliant teachers who will have shaped you in ways you may not realise for a long time to come. That is worth being grateful for. On behalf of all of your parents and families, congratulations to each and every one of you on your graduation. You've already shown you have resilience and adaptability in truckloads. We give you our heartfelt best wishes for all that lies ahead of you. And to finish, I'd like to come back to that bike that I mentioned a little earlier. Do you remember from when you were kids those glittery, sparkly streamers that you stick in the handles of your bike? I'd love to think that we could give you all a graduating present of a pair of those streamers. Since it's an imaginary present, you can conjure up whatever shiny colours you'd like and pop them into your imaginary bike handles. Garish and tacky and embarrassing and magnificent ready to ride off proudly down that path with the wind whistling through the streamers. None of us can ever know what's around the corner, but we reckon you are ready to take it on. We're so proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you, Jane. Now, Katrina Arcamoni will uh, be called to the podium to call names, and uh, uh, Juliet and I will um, help present them. Thanks, Katrina. Good evening, everyone. It's such a thrill to see you all here and all of those of you at home who are viewing as well. I've already said my farewell speech to Year 12 on their last day of school at the FLOP, so I won't continue just to say I'm so proud of each and every one of you and echo all the things that Mr Caritz already said to you tonight. You're going to go out and make a wonderful difference to this wonderful world that is in the need of your help and assistance. Carolyn Jang. Ivy Johnson, Jocelyn Kemp, Anthony Carr, Neon Canal, Savan Kana, Finn Kirk. Jamie Kwan, Alexander Lau, Winston Lamb, Benjamin Lafay, Brian Lee, Min Lee. Scott Lee, Ricky Lehman, Anson Lee, Ryan Lee, Stella Lee. Olive Lena Henshu, Harong Lung, Nicholas Lai, J. 
Joshua Lian Lee. Aiden Limnios. Angela Lin. Luya Lin. Jackie Lu. Nicole Lu. Wesley Lowe. Alistair MacDonald. Cecilia Maddox. Thomas Mai. Sasha Mendes. Emily Myers, Nathan Moo, Lenny Neagle Miller, Trinity Nig, Christine Nguyen. Danny Nguyen, James Nguyen, Sam Nguyen, Jason Nye, Wayleen Pan, Benjamin Park, Daniel Jean Park, Louise Park, <laughs> Amy Pham, Angelina Pham. Crystal Fam, Sabrina Fam, Jason Phillip. Congratulations to all these wonderful students. Luca Chalia will perform his extension to English work. This is a shorter summary of my extension to major work entitled Confrontation as Communication, which examined protests as text and then analyzed them using literary theory. I used a combination of critical analysis and creative nonfiction to look at recent actions in Australia, the United States, and Mexico, whilst exploring the ways protests are represented in other texts and media. So despite derision and dismissal in much of our media, protests are key sites of cultural learning and communication, which deserve our attention because they shape our world and our understanding of it. Protests and riots from the storming of the Bastille to Belarus dominate both our identities and mythologies. As we gather 13 days from six months since the murder of George Floyd and five weeks from the 10 year anniversary of the Arab Spring, it's clear that protest movements are going to remain in our news cycles and are generating broader participation within and beyond radical circles. 
This makes it crucial that we can evaluate these movements and their values for ourselves whilst understanding the cultural logic which guides them. Protests are driven by desire for change, meaning they inherently produce dialogue on the state of the world and opportunities for transformation. They either actively or symbolically prefigure the new worlds they wish to create, as they operate in literary worlds outside the generally accepted limitations of the state. They thus elucidate specific potentialities and actualities for reality, which challenge the constrictions demanded by dominant narratives. They seek truth in the possible just as readily as in the actual, the same as speculative and science fiction. This synthesizes the significant social effect of protests as they become both performative and discursive spaces within which contextual conditions become malleable, facilitating the creation of new contextual relationships. Take, for example, last September's climate march through the CBD. There's a sense of power which comes from walking on the coarse asphalt of city center roads, surrounded by thousands who are marching in step, more or less, chanting in unison, more or less. I make my way to the edge of the crowd, the roads are lined with traffic cones, white patrollers, and black riot teams. It's doubtful they'll pull nightsticks on school kids purely on optics, but there are later stories of harassment by mounted police. I continue marching, swept up in the tide of out of sync bodies and chants. In protests, communicative self reflexivity emerges from the blurring of the roles of performer and audience. In considering the climate strikes, protesters are both performer and audience for each other. The battle of symbolism through banners and slogans is an overt instance of this performative dialogue. The use of known slogans on placards, including memes, both identifies and informs the influence of teenage internet culture while setting a particular informal and jovial tone for discourse juxtaposed with normal political formality. This representative symbolism initially establishes identifiable ideological milieu which both inform and reveal meaning for participants and audience. The ways that protests make meaning for themselves can also be seen in the 2014 Ferguson Uprising and in Minneapolis earlier this year. The sun fades and it gets harder to see. Blackness, whiteness, gender, ability and politics blur in an experience which is universal but cannot be defined. There is at once the community and the individual, silhouetted by orange, red and blue. Everyone just is, people just be. A fractured array of masks and eyes staring back at police lines with jeers and chants. The voices fill the streets as people become more than themselves, more than others say they are, but combining without becoming the same. This resulted in dynamic protests which crucially developed without hierarchies. Expressions of frustration, anger or grief manifested first on an individual level, and it was from these individual actions and responses that the protest was built. One group shouting, chanting, or throwing rocks at police cars became an invitation for others to join in or to pursue their own actions. Individual political power manifests as authorial acts of confrontational textual creation, which resist the narratives and actions of those with the authorial power to dictate the status quo. This has been echoed in analysis of the burning of the third precinct in Minneapolis in late May, seen as a significant turning point in the George Floyd uprising because it demonstrated that the police could be beaten. This is important because it was in the days following May 28 and 29 that the protests spread around the US and the world. So counter to the derision of protests as senseless and irrational, I offer a self-reflexive lens of analysis we can use to evaluate the actions we see unfolding in the world every day around us for ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Luca. I'd now call on Ms. McMurray to once more uh, hand out the final round of certificates and podium badges. Lily Rose Robertson. Sire Saxon Thabel. <laughs> Amira Sant. Bhavan Sentel. Angel Sentel Nathan. William Shaw. Angela Shee.
currency. Jennifer Xu. Philip Shuropov. Emily Skelton. Michael Smith. Brahm Softer. Jason Song. Tom Stevens. Rory Stewart. Tim Sidorenko. <laughs> Raphael Tay. Victor Tang. Tom O'Tarrant. Vanessa Tay. Gabrielle Tien. Kian Thornley. Tiffany Chu. Max Tisello. John Townsend. Eric Tran. Jamie Tran. Matthew Tran, India Trueweek, Caitlin Troll, Nikita Ukladchikov, Lara Vance. Laksha Verma, Alexander Vodik, <laughs> Alexander Wang, Carmen Wen, Jaden White. Jack Williams, Mackenzie Wise, Connie Wong, Jonathan Wong, Shirley Wu. Calvin Shu, Gavin Shu, Kelvin Shu, Daniel Yang, Flora Yi. Jasmine Young, Kevin Yu, Stephen Zhang, Kevin Z, George Zhang. Leah Zeng.
Elton Zhao. Henry Zhao. And Yu Zhao. Zhao. Please give the man a round of Matthew Manchester will now present the Inst Inst Instrumental Music Program medals, followed by his students' response. Hello and congratulations to you all, Year 12, on making it to the end of a very, very challenging year. Usually I'd be making this speech uh, at the IMP mid-year concert, uh, farewelling the outgoing Year 12 members on behalf of the whole IMP. Unfortunately, that event was cancelled this year. Um, and so we've decided to present the Year 12 medals at graduation instead so family members can take part. The recording of this section will be spliced into the end of year concert, which will be streaming in a few weeks' time. To the IMP cohort of 2020, congratulations once again on behalf of the whole IMP. I'm incredibly proud of you. You're the largest Year 12 IMP cohort in the history of the program. And to be able to present medals to 40 of you is really exciting. But it's not just quantity, it's quality I, I want to talk about. For the past five years, you've attended camps, local and international tours, competitions and concerts. You've represented the school in state and national ensembles. You've turned up to countless early morning rehearsals. You've grown from small, boisterous, loud, and extremely out of tune year sevens into a group of young adults with a sense of teamwork, inspiring musicality, and immaculate professionalism. I couldn't be prouder of what you've achieved, and I'm bitterly disappointed that we couldn't make it six years of playing. The IMP is going to miss your musical abilities and your leadership, but rest assured, you have done your job and inspired the next generation of IMP musicians. In fact, almost 100 students lined up to audition for your places, even though rehearsals were still cancelled at the time. That should tell you how keen they are to emulate your success. Now you've heard me say this every year, but it bears repeating. Remember that the IMP you have been a part of for the last five and a half years is not normal. This opportunity should be available to every student in Australia, but tragically that's not the case. So if you find yourself later in life as a member of a school community without a thriving music ensembles program, you have a responsibility to make that happen. If you need help to achieve this, you know where to find me. A program like this can only exist because a community comes together to create these opportunities for you, the students. The community relies on huge support from the school, great teachers, of course, intelligent and keen students like yourselves, but perhaps most importantly, your parents. Year 12, give your parents a big hug and say thank you this evening, and a round of applause now. Your parents have sacrificed so much to get you here. Not only did they choose to invest significant amounts of money and time into your music, but they continued to do so after listening to you practice and after dragging your lazy teenage butts uh, every morning to early rehearsals, week after week, year after year. That takes some dedication. Art is the stuff of life, and it's been a pleasure making art with you for the past six years. So here's my final piece of life advice. As you head out into the world, find a way to give music a role in your brief, shining existence on this small spinning rock. Play your instrument in a community ensemble. Sing in a local choir. Make music for no reason other than the sheer joy of it. And last but not least, at a time when the music industry has been decimated by the pandemic, get out there and support live music making. I'd now like to invite Ms McMurray to present you with your IMP medals. So, IMP members, would you stand up and go through the door and up the stairs again in alphabetical order, if you can manage it? It's a test. Your final one.
Going well so far, guys. Okay, I think they might be ready. Ladies and gents, can you hold your applause until the end, please? IMP, shh. Devaraha Bahitharan. Isaac Broadhead. Luca Shalia. Sabine Chin Lo. Medina Kuhn. Lena Dai. Edmund Derwent. Shalon Devine. Alex Epps. Felix Fan. Julian Fu. Bridget Gard. Emily Grimes. Ben Hamer. Alana Hodzik. Luca Itamani. Ivy Johnson. Jonathan Kelly. Jamie Kwan. Anson Lee. Olive Lenahan Chu. Angela Lin. Wesley Lowe. Alastair MacDonald. Cecilia Maddox. Emily Myers. Waylin Pan. Crystal Pham. Bhuvan Senthil. Amelie Skelton. Michael Smith. Tom Stevens. Tiffany Tu. Max Tosello. Caitlin Truong. Carmen Wen. Jaden White. Jack Williams. Mackenzie Wise.
Jasmine Young. And Henry Zhu. Let's give them a big round of applause. If they can. I'd like to hand over to Alana and Cecilia, who will brief and make some brief remarks. Thank you. As cheesy as it may sound, our time in the IMP has been a pivotal facet of life at the fort, something I'm sure every member of the growing community can attest to. Uh, every conductor brings a fresh insight into music and has allowed us to hone our craft and view music from a different light. So I'd just like to take uh, a moment to give a big thank you to all of the conductors and tutors who've supported us over the years. is an integral part of the IMP experience, one that we've had the privilege to experience multiple times over, bonding over camp concerts and the hotly contested assassin game. Uh, and of course, uh, by far one of the best experiences of my time at the fort um, was the IMP tour in 2018, when we had the opportunity to travel uh, through Europe, not only sightseeing, but performing in uh, Vienna, Budapest, Zagreb and Prague, among many other amazing locations. The opportunities to perform and play together have truly been endless, our classic gig being the annual Sydney Estefant, which we sadly missed out on this year. Just having the opportunity to perform was amazing, but taking home prizes every year was pretty nice too. Even the 6am starts at speech day made an indelible impression. We can't wait to see what everyone else in the IMP will achieve over the next few years, and uh, we'll leave you with a few words from uh, the legendary J.O. Um, <laughs> well, the fact of the matter, as far as things are concerned, is, see, music is in everything. Thank you. Thank you, Matt Man Manchester, and congratulations to everyone in the INP. I'd now like to invite the principal, Juliet McMurray, to the stage to give her address. Thank you, Rod. Welcome families, staff, and most importantly, the graduating year class of 2020. I would also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land where Fort Street High School now stands the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge the important role Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people continue to play within this community. Tonight, the present and the past and the future all merge. Tonight, you cease to be students at Fort Street High School and become instead a part of the great traditions of the school. For from tonight, we will speak of your achievements at the fort in past tense. Tonight, we wish you the best of luck for your future, but we do not say goodbye. As you know too well, once a fortian, always a fortian. This evening is a very special night of celebration as we acknowledge your achievements collectively and as individuals. The impact that you have had on the fort and the legacy that you are leaving. But what will you be remembered for? other than the, than the year group with amazing hair. <laughs> From your time in year seven, you have provided the school with many distinguished scholars in the classroom, artists, performers, musicians, sportsmen and women, but you have also been part of a student group whose collective gifts and contributions, however small, have made it one of the finest year groups to pass through this school. You have will willingly grasped leadership opportunities, both formal and informal, to positively influence the student body as a whole. 
the future all goes well when it is in such excellent hands. We as a school are very proud of you and it has been an honour to have served you and we look forward to hearing of your future achievements. I didn't want to single out any students in particular tonight because there are so many young people in front of me who have achieved amazing things and if we devoted individual time to each of them we would be here all night. But I do have to single out two students in particular because the esteemed ceremony that they should have been invited to this year at Sydney Town Hall, along with many government dignitaries and the Secretary of Education was cancelled due to COVID and they have still not yet been presented with these awards. So I would like to call to the stage Anson Lee and Bridget Gard to officially recognise and present them on behalf of the Honourable Sarah Mitchell, Minister for Education. They have both uh, been awarded the Minister's Award for Excellence in Student Achievement. Congratulations. <laughs> year 12, 2020, despite the disruptions to your learning this year and the odd and ever-changing restrictions imposed on us as a large organisation, I do hope that you haven't felt too cheated of your final year of education and celebrations. Tonight we commemorate a great milestone in your lives. The HSC is over, Year 12 is done, this is the end of 13 years of schooling. Regardless of whether you started at Fort Street in Year 7, as most of you did, or if you joined the Fort somewhere along the way as I did, you have all made wonderful friendships and have bonded as a year group. I would like to especially thank Mr Carit, Ms Salisbury and Ms Cameron for all their organisation and preparation for your farewell brunch and school flop assembly. The atmosphere on that day reflected the warmth that is shared amongst you and your fellow Fortians and teachers and also the fondness that you hold for this great school. It is also appropriate on this night that we acknowledge the people in your life who have assisted you in your HSC and high school journey over the past six years. Your parents, family and classroom teachers. For your parents and family, this has also been a long and sometimes difficult journey. And now they are witnessing their children transition into adulthood and must accept them as young adults who take responsibility for their own actions. The lot of a parent is to freely provide food, clothes and support, to listen, to be the punching bag for irate teenagers to be misunderstood and to be your rock. Year 12, can you please join me in expressing your appreciation and ongoing support of your parents? <laughs> I would also like to especially thank Craig Truick and his team for offering to live stream this event tonight for family members who could not be with us. And again, I would like to uh, acknowledge Mr Crit, especially for his role as Year Advisor. He has been with you through thick and thin since Year 7. And your Year Assistants over the years, Ms Cotton, Mr Speranza and Ms Salisbury, Deputy Principals Ms Arcimony and Ms Cameron, all of whom have worked tirelessly and enthusiastically to support you at school and at home. Together, this team has supported you through tough times and good times. They have been your family away from home. Never underestimate the amount of time these dedicated teachers have spent worrying about you into the late hours of the night or the early hours of the morning. Please join me in thanking them. I'd also like to thank Ms Long in the office, Mr O'Neill and Ms Maddock in their assistance for setting up for this evening's ceremony and continuing to assist. Your classroom teachers at Fort Street High School have done an outstanding job working with you over the years and helping you to realise your potential. 
I know that you have demonstrated to your teachers over the past few months in particular how much you have valued their encouragement, support, belief, guidance and knowledge throughout your high school journey. Can we also acknowledge your teachers and everything they've done for you? The months to come are the beginning of a wonderful set of opportunities, full of expanding horizons and relationships as young adults you continue your educational journeys at university or in the workforce. It is always an emotional time when things come to an end and especially when we have to let go of something that is comfortable and familiar. There are always mixed emotions when we say our final farewells. The sadness of saying goodbye to people who have been such a big part of our lives over a period, a long period, is contradicted by the sense of joy that we share as we reflect on the past six years. Please remember, however, that Fort Street High School will always be a part of your fabric and it is my sincere hope that you look upon your time here with fond memories that will only grow in strength as the years go on. Please join the Fortians Union, be active alumni. I encourage you to remain connected to the school and share your life's journey with future Fortians and staff. The passion that you have shown for causes within the school, I hope you will take to the broader community to make a real difference. Your ability to influence others will be important, and I expect that each and every one of you, no matter what your age are, will defend the rights of others less fortunate than yourselves, and will fight with passion and intelligence to protect the rights of others. In an uncertain and troubling world, people who are not afraid to be different, who are not afraid to use their brains to question the world around them, are people we need more of. Be generous, kind, strong and courageous and always remember with pride this public high school you attended and its wonderful staff who have contributed so much to shaping your future. This school that you could not buy your way into and could only win placement through accidental gifts of nature and by diligent attention to your schooling, you owe it to the future of Australia to maintain this much this much of the Fort Street tradition, that you will be inquisitive and diligent, but also kind and concerned about fellow human beings, wherever they may be and whoever they are. That you will strive to have a full life, receiving and giving happiness and love as befits civilised people living in a blessed country. That you will be concerned for those less privileged who did not have the opportunities that our school still presents. And that our motto will not be, look at us and how good we are, look how we have made our own fortune. Instead it will be, we are the makers of a new and better world. We will not be satisfied with the making of our own fortune. We will try to make the world more fortunate as well for others. Also, over the next few months, take a moment to reflect and thank the people in your life, whether it be family or friends, who have made your high school years so enjoyable. I hope you leave knowing that you are well respected and that you will be missed for no better reason than just for who you are. In the great tradition of Michael Smith, I will end with a quote <laughs> from John Locke, a philosopher and physician. Education begins the gentleman but reading, good company, and reflection must finish him. Those who have read of everything are thought to understand everything too, but it is not always so. Reading furnishes the mind only with the materials of knowledge. It is the thinking that makes what is read ours. We are of the ruminating kind, and it is not enough to cram ourselves with great loads of collections. Unless we chew them over again, they will not give us strength and nourishment. And in my own words, I implore you to continue to dream. Embrace life fully. Life is precious. Go forth and experience everything that this magnificent world has to offer. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McMurray. 
I'd now like to call back to the stage Jaden White and also Shalom Devine to give the student address on behalf of U12. Good evening everyone, um, my name is Shalon and this is Jaden. Welcome to the graduation, oh sorry, thank you for coming to the graduation for the class of 2020. We would like to offer here a sequel to um, Michael and Amira's flop graduation speech that drew an analogy between the HSC's English Paper 1 and 2020. The date now is the 21st of October, the task Paper 2. For many, this will call to mind traumatic memories of the unanticipated reflectionless Mod C, <laughs> or maybe it draws suspicion towards Mr. Melser, who seemingly paid off Nessa to include his under milk or trials question in the paper. <laughs> Regardless, much like Dylan Thomas's narrative voice, Shalon and I, offering an essay each, would like to guide you through the multifaceted and quotidian beauty of an enduring and distinctive text <laughs> in a West Selective High School, Ford Street. While we cannot paint an immaculate picture of the fort, we can definitely say, as many generations gone by have definitely said, it is better than James Roos. <laughs> Roos is in many ways the shadow of the original text, lacking in, in originality and power. <laughs> the fort, however, is bountiful in originality. Look no further than the notorious teacher sniping water fights, its culinary genius when it comes to cake making, uh, and it's virtuosic knack for booking the finest Airbnbs. <laughs> Not to mention Mackenzie Wise's talent for breaking walls and arms, <laughs> Max and Victor's never-ending streams of capital, and uh, Ben and Kean's seemingly bon bottomless acumen on just about anything that has a subreddit or Wikipedia page. The achievements of its students also seem to have no bounds as they range from Anson's IPT state rank in year 10, uh, Emily James Crystal's titration domination, Emily Max and Jamie's encore nominations, not to forget the sheer extent people are popping off and receiving early offers into university. Then there's Esther's jaw-dropping 99 in the English advanced trials, the jaw-dropping frisbee virtuosity concentrated uh, between the state representative fell off team and the humble sultans of Scrib. <laughs> And of course, Michael Smith's rank two in all of Australia in Geometry Dash. <laughs> we can certainly surmise that Fordians share an unbounded sense of creativity, the roots of which date back to cultural phenomena like the seven eye rap. It baffles me how that made it past the executive screening process and yet John Cypherverse didn't. <laughs> or maybe it's uh, 70s, possibly unfounded, but clear sense of supremacy over the other year seven classes. Nevertheless, I can say with great assurance that these minds have been nurtured and backed by the acumen of staff whose wisdom far exceeds their years. Take for example, Miss Titten's responsible popcorn cooking methods <laughs> that almost set fire to the school, or perhaps Mr. Ockwell's demonstration of his chair throwing proficiency, <laughs> or even Mr. Wilkinson's cognizance regarding native Australian acacia trees. But genuinely, Miss Salisbury, but genuinely, Miss Salisbury's office has been a safe haven from uni and HSC stress. Matt Manchester has built a strong and long-lasting music community around us, and Miss Arcimony has cared for this grade like a mother. One thing that I know will long outlive this cohort is the sense of inclusivity and diversity that this school doesn't tolerate, but celebrates. From the textual conversation thus created between Roos and Ford Street, I think Fordians can rest assured that we are indeed a unique school. You turn over, to the, you turn over the, plate, the page to the next essay question. Evaluate the extent to which Ford Street High School is an enduring and distinctive work of public education. Clearly, the key component of enduring value is the lessons we've learned here that will stay with us for the rest of our lives. From Ms. Moxham and her speeches, we learned the virtue of patience. 
Mr. Kruitt's wisdom on the importance of green time, as well as his expert hair advice, immediately spring to mind. And how could we ever lose the life, the life skills developed in completing Ms. Archimedes' connected curricula just hours before its due date? <laughs> this year especially, we've developed so much resilience, and we have to thank Mr. Morrison for his clairvoyant decision to cut, to cut out our mock-up photos in which we showed up in COVID-themed outfits back in February. Perhaps, but perhaps the most enduring lessons are found in the realisation of the immense value of our teachers' hard work and never-ending support. Think for a moment of the rather poorer experience that high school would have been without all the times we've had bonding with our teachers, without the school camps and events that our year advisor and deputies tirelessly organised, without the assurance that we could go to these people in times of need. As star, as star English student Alastair MacDonald will tell you, the key to any good mod B essay is appreciation of the text. We cannot overstate our appreciation for our parents, teachers and the staff at Fort Street for their dedication to our learning. The distinctive qualities of, a high, of our high school experience simply could not have come about without the nurturing environment fostered by these people who have brought us all together and maintained textual integrity and new cohesion at Fort Street High School. I feel so lucky to have had the opportunity of attending Fort Street and to have been able to share the past six years with you all. And on that note, we've got um, a, a, a gift for M Mr. Crit, um on behalf of the whole grade. familiar with the age-old adage, Faba es sai kiskai fortunae, we are the makers of our own destiny. But when it comes to the craft of writing our futures, it's also true that some things are unknowable. There's little we can do to uncover the secrets of the future, but we can indulge our imaginations and picture how everyone's doing in, let's say, 50 years' time. Bouvan will likely be operating on me while playing Among Us, in the other hand. <laughs> Felix is probably still jacked. The anonymous project has likely gone on to reach Banksy level renown. There will probably be still no conclusive, conclusive evidence that Michael Smith is literate. <laughs> and uh, and Sai has probably crashed his cars more times than crickets chirp within a 15 second interval on a summer's day. <laughs> I can't wait to see you guys in the news when you're hugely fam famous and successful. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll be hearing about Anton Lee running Tesla alongside Musk, Richard Gard following the path of Miss McMurray as Fort Street's next principal, and about the Tasmanian hike planning business that Emily and Carmen will inevitably found. But this is nothing compared to the impressive things everyone will, will be doing that are beyond our imaginations that we can't possibly predict now. Let us return to the present moment. In truth, it is not our, it is not our accomplishments that have defined our time here. But if not that, then what? In lieu of a reflection statement, we'd like to leave you with a proverb, the ancient wisdom of Michael Kirby. <laughs> um, good afternoon, uh, distinguished guests. Uh, I am Michael uh, Kirby, not Smith. Um, and I would like to recite a quote for you. Um, I want to identify, if I can, the most important thing that we can discover in life, I refer to love. <laughs> love for one another, love for our community, love for others everywhere in the world. Love transcends even scholarship, cleverness and university degrees. It is greater than pride and wealth. It endures when worldly vanities fade. Congratulating the graduating class of 2020. Thanks, Jaden and Shalon and uh, Michael. Uh, indeed, uh, I would like to just second Miss McMurray's uh, thanks and uh, endless gratitude to Craig Trewick and his team 
uh, who have live streamed, of course, the flop, flop assembly and tonight's event. Um, many, uh, uh, many thanks. Uh, we've now come to the end of the ceremony. And I'd like to thank you and good night. And may I just have to uh, remind you just to be careful of COVID, COVID uh, restrictions. Thank you.